Looks like we got our first guest, Giovanni. St I've been butchering your last name. Is it, is it Stantillan or Stantillan? Stantillan. Yeah, the first one. Stantillan. Okay. So how are you, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing well, man. How are you guys um, doing? Uh, we're good. We're good. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to sound like a casual. I have been watching your fights, but I, I, I want to get the whole backstory. So nationality, what, what, what's your nationality? Uh, Mexican, 100%. Okay. Were you born here or over there? Yeah, but uh, born and raised here in uh, San born Diego. And raised yeah, born and raised San right here. San Diego? Okay. So I wanted to get you on. Obviously, you yeah. got a big fight with yeah. Alexis Rocha, correct? Yeah, yep. Uh, you it sounds um, you might be in a bad service area. I don't know if you can move closer to the Wi-Fi or maybe closer to the house. Uh, I see that you're outside. I mean, it, it looks great, but you, you're freezing slightly. Can you hear me? Perfectly, perfectly. But uh, what got you into boxing, man? Giovanni, you there? Oh, shit. He froze up. Yeah, he's got bad service over there. Damn. Let's see what happens. So, uh, born and raised in San Diego, definitely Mexicano. Okay. Right. Nice. Gotcha. So, I was uh, asking what got you into the sport? Oh, man, I mean, I'm 31 now, but I started boxing when I was uh, eight years old. And uh, my dad, my dad took uh, my brother and I to the gym uh, back when I was eight. My brother was, he's like 15 months younger. He was about seven, I think, at that time. Um, and, yeah, ever since then, just just stuck with it, man. My dad just and I just, just found a passion for it and stuck with it. Um. Anybody that we might know that you faced in the amateurs and you're on your way up? Yeah, I mean, man, a, a bunch of guys, man. But I mean, right off the top of my head, I remember I fought. I think, I think when I was like 12 years old, Hugo Centeno. You know, he's okay. a middleweight now. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Hugo, oh, he dropped off. Uh, we got to Okay, you're back. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Hugo Centeno. I can't think of other guys, man, uh, off the top of my head, but but there's some guys, yeah, for sure. And you know, along the years, uh, people fall off, man. And you know, I've gone this far uh, just from sticking with it and keep grinding and working hard. And uh, over the years, there was a lot of guys that that I saw in the amateurs and tournaments that were really good fighters, and and they just don't stick with it, or, or stuff happens in life, I guess. Are you officially with Top Rank, or are you just with Split T and David McWaters? Uh, we're with Top Rank. Okay. Yeah. So T, this yeah. was a purse bid situation, or you guys came to an agreement? Because this is Golden Boy versus Top Rank with Alexis Rocha and yourself. I'm not sure of all the details, but I think they just came to an agreement. Um, I think it was a pretty easy fight to make. Um, as soon as, uh, you know, my manager just asked me, because another name that was being thrown around was Josh Taylor, you know, and I told him, oh, I'll fight that guy. You know, I want that fight. And, um, you know, because they're thinking about moving up to mm -hmm. 147 pounds. And, um, after... You're going to have to put on Do Not Disturb. Yeah, I, it's a call. I keep not, getting... Do Not Disturb so you don't get the calls. But go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, after uh, I got off the phone with my manager, you know, I, I texted him. I was like, hey, Alexis Rocha is another name that I'm very interested in. If we could make that fight happen, I'd love to take that one on too. And uh, about a week later, he hit me up and told me that that's a fight that we're going to get. They said it's going to happen. Wow, must be nice. Has it been that way all your career? Like, hey, I want this guy and they're able to get it? Or has this been the first time you ask for someone and they actually get the person you want? That's the first time. Uh, to be honest, I've, I've never been the type of guy to call people out, but I'm at that point now, man. I want those big fights now. And uh, there's a lot of movement happening, it seems like, in the welterweight division. So it just seemed like the right time. Like I, I'm trying to make those, those calls out, call-outs now. 
And uh, so I'm glad that, you know, I did that and, and we're getting this opportunity. Now, what's your thoughts on uh, Mr. Rocha? Because he's no slouch. I mean, he did lose to Rashidi Ellis, Speedy Ellis, who's very fast, but he holds a knockout win over uh, Blair the Flair, Cobbs, and uh, Anthony Juice Young. And he's been, on, you know, putting together a good amount of knockouts throughout his career. No, I think he's a good fighter, you know, a younger guy than myself. Um, definitely, like you said, he's had those good performances, but I feel very confident in myself and what I can do. And I think um, when I get these types of challenges, I just get, I don't know, a, a different type of excitement and, and uh, motivation, you know. And um, so I'm ready, man. I'm excited to get this, this fight and showcase, you know, what I can do. So who's your trainer? I'm, we're training with Robert Garcia, and I still have my dad along. Uh, but with Robert Garcia up in Riverside. And how's that been? Because I know Robert can get busy. He's He gets pulled in a lot of different directions. He's got to travel a lot, of, a lot of different places, has fights every weekend. Uh, do you feel you're getting the attention you need and you will be ready for this fight? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, right there at Robert's gym, everybody's working hard. And, uh, you know, Robert's always busy, but that's a good thing. You know, all the good fighters want to be there. So I have a lot of, of good quality sparring, you know. And so so we're happy to be there for sure. Now, this is Southpaw versus Southpaw, correct? Because uh, I believe Roach is Southpaw. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I feel comfortable with Southpaws. Um, being at Robert's gym, I've been able to spar with a lot of Southpaws, you know, pretty frequently. And... Um, even, you know, throughout the year, even if I don't have a, a fight coming up, you know, I'm working with righties, I'm working with southpaws, and I think that's been a, a really good thing for me because, you know, you never know when you get an opportunity like this, and, you know, so so I'm I'm confident about it. So I, I should assume that you're with Robert Garcia, so you're always in shape. Like, I don't know a Robert Garcia fighter that gassed out. I don't, I mean, maybe... Ramirez, maybe in that Zepeda fight, which I just, I don't even think that's true. I, I really doubt that uh, people in his camp have not been in top conditioning. Can we assume the same for yourself? Yeah, absolutely. You know, everybody there, we're all working hard. And I think it shows, like you said, you, you never see that happen. Um, just from how, how hard we're all working and pushing each other. Now, this is going to be a Golden Boy promoted fight. Do you feel... Top rank is sending you to the enemy territory because they believe you can come back with the win? Yeah, definitely. You know, um, I kind of like that. You know, I feel like like it, it's, it's, it lights a fire in me to know that I, I got to go over there and really show them something, you know. Um, that's his promotion, so I know it has to be a, a very decisive victory. And um, that, that just gets me going. So I think, uh, I think it's a good thing for me to take a fight like this and to show everybody exactly. In terms of neutral judges and referees, do you just let top rank handle that and train, or is that a concern and something that you brought up to your team since it's going to no. be a Golden Boy Promotions? No, to be honest, it's not something I've been thinking about much. You know, I just – right now all I'm focused on is, is my training and, and making sure we're coming up with the right game plan, uh, making sure I'm ready, getting good sparring. Uh, but those details, they, they do matter. But I, I believe that, you know, as long as I show, you know, and, and I'm very decisive in this victory, that, that it won't matter at the end of the day. I think that I'm, I'm going to show that in this fight. Now, obviously, top rank had Terrence Crawford, who is holds one of the biggest wins in the welterweight division. Um, does that bother you at all that they were not able to put him in the position that he's in now and you're also a welterweight? Or do you think because you're Mexican and you have that Mexican fan base, it wouldn't be the same issue? I'm not sure if it has to do with all of that. I think, um, I don't know, I think right now with Terrence Crawford maybe possibly moving up to 154, a lot more opportunities are going to happen. Um, just like this fight, you know, I don't believe it was hard to make when, once I made the call, you know, the call out. Um, and I think that going forward, you know, first I got to focus on this fight, but going forward, I think we'll be able to make big, bigger fights like this happen. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. I'm excited for this fight. I, I, I believe you guys uh, should put together an all-action affair. Oh, definitely. 
So uh, who's your second in the corner? Oh, your dad, you said. So it's your dad, dad. and Robert. And yeah, what, and then the man uh, Al Gamet, a good friend of mine. And and the good friend of yours is who? Uh, Al Gomez, my cut man. Okay. Okay, that's yeah. what I wanted to make sure that he was the cut man. If not, ask who was going to be the cut man. So how much time did you get uh, for this fight in terms of announcement? So like when did the they let you know? Yeah, so it's been about, I don't know, maybe early in August, I found out that, that this is a fight that could be made. Um, you know, I fought in July. So right after that, maybe I took like a week and then right back in the training, um, especially knowing that I could get a fight soon. And then they let me know that this is the fight that would happen probably like three, two, three weeks ago. Um, but I've been training, you know, I've been sparring. So it wasn't, it wasn't hard to just pick it up and, and you know, uh, push, push a little harder in the gym. I mean, you have plenty of time, too. It's officially for October 21st on the zone, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got plenty of time. I mean, sheesh. You, 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 oh, yeah. You still, you still got almost two months, man, so you should be definitely in tip-top shape for sure. Uh, what yeah. would you say Alexis Rocha does best? You know, he's, um, I think he fights very well at that mid-distance. You know, I think that's where he's comfortable. Um, so... You know, we're, we're studying that and see how we can make them uncomfortable. Is there any way possible that this fight could end up come October 21st? Do you believe, have you been told that this can possibly be elevated to a vacant title fight? I mean, if Crawford and... It's been announced that, that Earl activated the rematch. If that fight is really happening at 54... He's the number one, and I believe you're the number two, correct? Yeah, I think um, I'm definitely up to having. You're checked. number four, and he's number one. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's definitely possible that it can happen for a vacant title, but I guess if you haven't heard that, it's not. <laughs> I mean, I've been hearing rumors about it for sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're not the first one to bring it up to me, and um, yeah, I also believe that 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 could happen. So I think it's a high stakes fight for me for sure. Added motivation, you think? Oh, definitely. Definitely. This is what I've been... Say again? This, this is what I've been training for my whole life. Absolutely, man. So who are some of the guys that you look up to or, or that you watched tape of, or uh, you know, as you've been working on your career? I mean, a lot of guys, man. Eric Morales, Juan Manuel Marquez, some of my favorite fighters. But Floyd, too, you know, and I was part of his camp uh, when he fought Manny Pacquiao back in 2015. And just to be around that and, and see the work ethic, you know, those are some of the guys that, that I've always looked up to. So Floyd brought you in for sparring or you were just in the camp? No, for sparring. Yeah, we were there for seven weeks. We missed that wow. first week. Yeah, I was able to get in there with him five times in that whole camp. You know, because wow. he brings in a lot. Five times I got, I got to spar with, with uh, Floyd. And 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 are there doghouse rules or did he do three minute rounds? No, we were going like six minute rounds, um, probably like three minutes at a time. But um, when I would get in them, I think because of the pressure I would apply, they would lower it from six minutes to four minutes on the second and third round. Um, so I, I would keep them busy, and I think that's why they kept me in camp. Nice, nice, nice. That's. What, outside of his work ethic, what was it that stuck out that you're like, wow, you know, he's doing this or, you know, Floyd does whatever? Yeah, I mean, outside of the work ethic, what I would see is, uh, you know, he'd have good days and bad days in sparring, you know, uh, but it didn't matter. It's almost like it wouldn't set him back. You know, his mindset was always, you know, he's going to win. And he would train just as hard, get out of the ring. He didn't look phased by it. He would work hard. The next day, show up and improve and, and do better in the sparring sessions. Out of all these welterweight names out there, who, who do you see as your big fight? Because the Earls, the Crawfords, they're, they're moving up. They're gone. What's Stanti Young's biggest fight? Stantili, Stantili Young, Jesus, biggest fight. Hey, Jan. Um, man, there's a lot of names, as you know. Uh, first things first is Alexis Rocha, right? But I think, you know, winning that fight could set me up for bigger fights next year. You know, with Josh Taylor, he, he might be moving up. That's a fight that could happen. But if that doesn't happen, 
Um, there's other fighters like Sanyones, there's uh, Ennis too, and those are other big names that I, I'd love to take on, man. You know, they're, they're all good fighters, but I think they're all opportunities, you know, for me to show greatness. You know, you get a lot of talk about Virgil and Stanionis and obviously Jerron Boots Ennis. Do you consider that a good thing that you could be, I guess, considered a sleeper, right? You creep up yeah. on somebody and they don't know what's in front of them till it's too late. That's how I feel, man. That's how I feel. All right. Well, man, Giovanni, I want to thank you, obviously, for your time. It, 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 those are all our questions. We just wanted to get an update. Definitely, we will have you on before the fight since it's almost two months out and uh, just get in a, another update on camp. But, yeah, man, we wanted to just talk to you a bit because we appreciate this fight. We're glad you took it. Yeah, absolutely. No, thank you guys. And uh, can't wait to speak to you guys again uh, right before the fight. Give out any social media for anybody crazy enough not to be following you. Yeah, just follow me, Giovanni Santillan. If you look me up, uh, you'll just find me. Uh, it's just straight Giovanni Santillan on uh, Instagram. All right, champ. Well, appreciate you, man, and best of luck. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Well to wait. Giovanni Stantillang. This is going to be a good fight. I'm excited, man. I'm a hardcore, bro. Like, these little fights, you know, I know they're not the, the, the Crawfords. What up, the YouTube family? Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Help us get to that million subscribers. We're on the road to a million. And, obviously, we have other great content on our Patreon channel. So, since this video is over, head on over to our Patreon and check out all the exclusive content or right here on our YouTube members.